So I really wanted to make a video about advanced synthesis techniques that really anyone can use with whatever synthesizer. But what's really interesting is I've noticed these things while working with Ableton Live Drift. And if you don't know, Drift is a synthesizer that comes with Ableton Live Lite. A lot of people don't buy standard or sweet. They usually do have Lite, even if they're not a big time Ableton user, they usually have that in their computer. And I found that Drift is extremely useful as a synthesizer, even though it's considered like an entry level synth. So it's pretty amazing. And I think you'll find these synthesis techniques really useful and you can apply them to any synthesizer as well. Now, if you look at my envelope, it looks like a typical pad sound. So you have a slower attack and it's gonna kind of drift in, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> when I play the sound on the keyboard. And I have the filter cutting a lot of the high frequencies. And then if I go over here to frequency mod, I'm actually using the LFO to a certain degree to sort of move that filter and sort of brighten up the sound. But then if I go over here to this little hidden button right here, it gives me more modulation, modulation options. So I can see if I go down here, I have key selected. Key would mean that when I go to a lower key versus a higher key, it will do something differently. And I have it turned all the way up and it's acting on the LFO rate. So basically what this sound is doing, it has sort of a sine wave slash kind of random uh, LFO wave. And it's moving around faster when I move up the keys and go slower when I move down. And it's a pretty simple idea, right? I mean, you can mess around with your envelope and your filter, but then you go over here, you kind of use your uh, frequency um, with the LFO. So it's gonna get brighter or darker with the LFO. And then I can control the speed of that event based on what key I'm playing on the keyboard. So in a nutshell, what's happening is the lower notes will have this sort of calm movement to them. But as you move up in pitch, The filter is moving um, a lot more dramatically, almost like a vibrato kind of effect. And it just makes what you play on the keyboards way more expressive. In general, I find people that use Ableton Live Lite Drift don't even know that this mod window is right here. And there's really cool things that you can do to make your sounds more expressive. For instance, you can see I have this pluck patch here. And basically it has a bandpass going on and I've tied the key modulator to three different things. The high pass frequency, the low pass frequency, and the detune effect on one of the oscillators. So basically, what does this do? When I'm playing lower notes, the sound has more low frequencies. And as I move up the keyboard, the sound gets thinner and brighter. And it also becomes more detuned. So you have this, you know, I just have two simple sine waves here, but one of them is getting more aggressively detuned as I go up in pitch. And that creates that tightening alien sounding effect with the really high pitches. So you get this extremely expressive sound where the low pitches are more mellow, the high pitches are more dramatic and strange sounding. Another thing that's really interesting about Drift is you can absolutely make more retro sounding synth pads like this one. Basically, all that I'm doing is I'm just supplementing Drift with other modules that you get with Ableton Live Lite. So you can see here I have Chorus Ensemble, and I set it to vibrato mode, which is going to change the pitch. And I just turn the rate down and the amount down a bit, so it's just kind of slowly moving the sound. Turn the warmth up, that's a really nice module, um, especially when you get near like 50%. And then I have Auto Filter just shaving off the high frequencies. And I'm kind of doing the same thing with EQ3 after my effects. 
So it's really useful for that. You can just kind of make a more retro sounding pad or, or synth sound just by using some other modules after drift. Another thing that's really interesting is that you get instrument racks with Ableton Live Lite. And a lot of people don't even know that instrument racks exist or whatever they do. And basically what it is, is you can stack two drift presets onto each other. And this can create a world of possibilities. So it's kind of amazing where this can be put into action, especially with something really driving like arpeggio related presets. I have one that I've made right here. And basically it's just a simple arpeggio preset. And essentially with the instrument rack, I can do something really cool. Like for instance, let's go over here and grab the instrument rack, put it on a MIDI track, and I'm just going to drag this into one of the lanes of that instrument rack. And once I click this button, I can see it represented right here. I can still take this highlighted module, hold down control on PC or I think command on Mac and duplicate it by drag and dropping it and creating a clone of that sound. And then when I go to this arpeggiator, I can turn up the steps and now I have six or seven octaves of that arpeggiation, which is going to greatly expand the uh, sound that we're hearing. <laughs> So it's pretty cool. And if I mute the extended one, you can hear the original sound. And here's the extension going up several octaves. So basically in a couple of seconds, I've just created dual arpeggiation synths. And it doesn't really cost a lot of CPU usage because again, these are Ableton Live Lite modules. They don't use a lot of your computer to run. And I think this is especially interesting because one of the things that people are really getting into these days with modern hardware synths, like the Hydra synth, for example, is having a bitambral synthesizer. And basically that's one of the main features. You can run arpeggiation sequence with two separate engines at the same time. And using stuff that's just from Ableton Live Lite, I can essentially do that. And while these have the same timbre, I could just easily go in and let's say switch out the oscillators for a different tone in one of these um, arpeggiation sequences. And now you have sort of dual running arpeggiations with different timbres as well. So it's really interesting, just something you can do in seconds that um, on hardware synthesizers is a big deal, a very useful feature. And in Ableton Live Lite, you can do it right in your instrument rack and do it in seconds. The instrument rack idea is also useful because it applies to Simpler, which is the basic sampler device that comes with Ableton Live Lite as well. So again, a really powerful device that you get with Ableton Live Lite. And if I go ahead and grab it over here and bring it into the instrument rack, I can grab a really simple one shot from some other kind of instrument that's not a synth, like a piano, for instance. I have this one shot right here. And I can just easily go ahead and drag and drop this into Simpler. And now I can trigger it from Simpler when I go into this mode. All I have to do is turn up the release so that it behaves a little more like a piano would. So now I have a piano sound and then I can just combine it with a synthesizer sound. And this is really fun to do. You can basically grab, you know, almost anything, combining it with a piano sound, get really cool effects. Maybe I'll grab like this sort of deep sounding pad. And basically when I play the piano now, it's followed by this really nice pad. And I can go in and still customize it further. So for instance, if I want to grab a reverb and place that after this piano sample, it might place it a little more in the dimension of that deep sounding pad. Turn up the decay on that. We'll 
grab our keyboard. So yeah, it's really easy to make really cool sounds in Ableton Live Lite using just those beginner modules, you could call them. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more. I'm still going to make a beginner style tutorial for Drift, similar to the one that I made with Wavetable. So be on the lookout for that. And if you like the sounds and stuff that I create for my community, you can get all my presets, samples, and MIDI um, in the link in the description below, including the sounds that you heard in this video. So yeah, you guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next video. And as always, have fun making music.